Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of The Valder Beebe Show. I have used Credit Help USA, the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and The Valder Beebe Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit credithelptx.com, click on The Valder Beebe Show icon, and get started living life divinely. Hello and welcome to the Valerie Beebe Show, a new kind of spiritual talk show. But this is my version of what I call God Talk, where I have soul-to-soul -soul conversations with great souls on this planet. Today I have Penny and Roy Newton. They're here to talk about the book they wrote, Our Broken Rose, The Candace Rose Story. It's a beautiful story, it's a heartwarming story, and it's a heartbreaking story also. So I wanted to hear from them some of the things that I want to get answers to. I do the Valder BB show because I want to find answers for me and hopefully, vicariously, you will find answers in your life also. Mr. and Mrs. Newton, welcome to the Valder BB show. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to talk with you. You guys have a story. You wrote your book. Uh, your story is so impactful as parents, as a man and a wife, as believers in God. There's so much wrapped up in this small book, Our Broken Roads. We could start with you, Ms. I'll start with you, Mrs. Newton. Why did you guys want to write the book? Well, my mother had been telling me that I need to write a story concerning Candace. And I was like, no, Mama, you know, I, I'm not ready. I don't want to write a story. I don't want to write the story. And she said, you need to write the story. And well, Roy had been telling me too to write a story. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to write that story. And uh, finally, one day I, I woke up and I thought, I'm forgetting. I am forgetting. You know, this is six years now. I'm, I'm, I've, things have started to fade about her, about the things that I knew from birth coming up. And I thought, well, if I'm going to write the story, now is the time to write it. Uh, I just thought that it was something that needed to be told, that people could get some feedback from it. The strength that we had going through this, I know it'll help somebody. And that was the purpose because I wanted to help somebody else. I knew someone was going to go through it again. And that was the real purpose of writing the book. So someone else, if they're going through this, that they would have comfort. They could find comfort in just reading the book and knowing who God is, that he's a deliverer. Even though it doesn't look like it, God is a deliverer. Ms. Newton, she said the word strength, the strength y'all had going to, through this. Tell me a little bit about Candace Rose before we talk about her. Well, Candace was a strong young lady. <laughs> she was, when she was born... Um, you say you saw yourself in her, or her in you. I, I, I did, and, and, and in my memory, when I would call it, I still do. She uh, was a type of individual that, you know, there was, there was not a stop sign for her. If she was determined to have her own place when she got out of high school, uh, she was going to have that. If she was determined to graduate with her class, even though she was a couple of years behind and she had to do uh, her senior year and junior year in the same year in order to make that accomplishment happen, she did so. Do you know? People with a short lifespan, do they know something you think that we don't know? You know, I, I believe they do. I believe that God inherently gives them the, the ability to know that they're coming home soon. And uh, with Candace, I believe that she felt that way because she had no reserve. She was uh, on the gas pedal continuously. She never hit her brake. She said, I, I'm going to live this, and I'm going to live it to the fullest. And she did. I love that. Mrs. Newton, tell me, I asked you why you wrote the book, 
give me some nuances on the book. Tell me about Candace being sick, because this was the impetus for you writing the book. Um, Candace, Candace was a very, even from birth, you know, she, Candace was always a little lively baby. Um, and her sickness, you know, she was born with a, a disease called biliary atresia. Uh, that's where she was born without bile ducts. And um, so we found that out eight weeks into her life. And um, from that day until the day she passed away, it was a struggle. You know, she's always had something else that after this is done, something else would come up. But um, Candace, as a, you know, with her illness, she, she, she never wavered. She just, she was just, you know, she was always sick. She, we was, and the times going back and forth to Dallas, to children, she had so many, you know, obstacles in her way, but she still managed, managed to, to just get over it, you know, and uh, so, so many things. Mr. Newton, obviously Candace is your daughter, so you see her as special, and, and in a sense it's all parents see their children. Yes. But beyond that earthly special, did you see something else in her? But see, you walk this walk, and that's why I'm asking you, do you see that most of us feel that God has given us a child to take care of, to raise, to bring into the world. But when your child is not well, do you see something different? Or do you just see a child like we see our child? You know, that's a wonderful and interesting question because you see it from both viewpoints. It, it, it's, it's amazing because in your upper days and, and when you're in high spirits, you, you see your child as, as sick but yet still special. I and mean, when you're in your down in the valley days, you just see a sick child and you want her to get better. But there was oftentimes that I had walked in the room with Candace, and especially after she had had her Kasai surgery and they had a little drainage tube that was coming out of her side. And uh, it was supposed to stay in there a certain amount of days. And she had her little, we call it a booby, but it's a pacifier. And she would reach, she standing up in the little cage, it's like a little metal prison. It was, it was just a, <laughs> to me, you know, but it was, it was a baby's bed, but it was up with high rails. And she was trying to get out because she saw me and she reached for me and I reached for her and it pulled, actually pulled her drainage tube out. And the doctor came in and said, wow, wow. Well, we were gonna have to take it out anyway, so don't worry about it. But everybody was really upset because that was a big deal for us. But to answer your question, Candace was, I could see something in her that was special, that was enlightening, that was, I truly believe God sent her here in order for me to have a different outlook in life. Uh, I do, because you know, I've always been a, a firm believer in Jesus Christ and raised in the church and, and all of that. But as a young man, I had a tendency to have my doubts and, and, and wanted to be a part of the world and that type of thing. And some of the things that I did wasn't always right, you know. But when I saw my baby come into the world, when I first saw her, she had a teardrop coming down her face. When I first saw her. And when I last saw her, when she took her last breath, she had a teardrop coming down her face. But here, here's the rub with that. God has been so good, and I think that he sent her in order for us to unify as husband and wife, us to be able to grow together. I, I do. That, that's a powerful statement. Let's talk about... Uh... Candace, she had been sick, and then I'm amazed by this. Then something goes wrong with her liver. You guys have been dealing with all kinds of probably small crises and then big crises, and so here comes a life-threatening crisis. Not so much about the liver transplant. What do you tell God, or what do you say to God? Well. Um First of all, Candace was, when she was born, it was the liver that was the problem. Uh, 
she was eight weeks in before we even really knew what was wrong with her, and then they told us it was her liver. Um, but, but to think, I, I, I was raised, I always say I was born and raised in the church. I, I, that's all I've ever known coming up was, uh, you know, that God was a healer and, and, and that God could do anything, you know. And so I just put my trust in God and believed that he would make everything okay. Uh, I believed that with my whole heart. I didn't doubt. Now, did I get tired? I was tired. But as far as doubting who God was and the things that we were going through, um, I've always had the motto, if God say live, we'll live, and if God say die, we'll die. So whatever God say, I would say it was all right with me. Mr. Newton, it's always easy to have your wife's understanding when it's over there. But when it comes to your house, mm -hmm. what does it do to your faith? Or how do you hold your faith up? Because what we see and what actually is going on is two different things. Yes. How do you hold your faith up? How do you continue to believe? How do you make your faith stronger? How do you make your faith get you through this? Well, for me, in my house, we were serve the Lord at all times. And we have always had a strong focus on this. And I'm reminded in Romans chapters 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So when I would go back in myself and think about the promises of God and what God's word has said, and so I trust in it. He said, if you believe and not doubt, then whatever you asked, this is Jesus talking about his father, he said, then it shall be done. And so our children have always seen us pray together. Our children have all us seen us worship. Our children have all us seen us call upon the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so there are many times that they would not doubt or they would not have fear that many times they would bring their friends over and say, well, don't worry about it. My daddy and mom will pray for it. It'll be all right. So to answer your questions, in those times that were challenging, we would cry. Uh, 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 but in, but we knew what the word says. He <laughs> says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So we would cry looking for the joy that was yet to come. We hold his word to be true. We always have and we always will. And so when you ask that question, how do you hold on? Number one, God cannot lie. And he said, if you believe and you trust and you don't doubt, he said, then you can ask and you will have, you will have what you ask for. It might not come when you want it, it might not come in the time period that you desire, but it will come to fruition. And so we have always hold those truths in our family and they have, our children have always seen that. I hope that you've gotten something out of my interview with the Newtons about their daughter that Candace Rose that has gone on to be with Jesus. I hope they help you to uplift your faith and believe better and stronger and more. But if you haven't, you can get a copy of their book. If you just Google them online. The book is titled Our Broken Rose, The Candace Rose Story. Thank you for joining us today on the Founder BB Show. God talk.